So we are in the off season now, folks. 2028, October of 2028, uh, preparing for the 2029 season. This off season will be interesting, I think, uh, for a few reasons. We just have some decisions to make. Uh, you know, the team wasn't as strong this year because of injuries. Uh, some injuries that could have possibly affect the guys coming back at full strength. Some guys getting older. We don't. This says we have no money to spend. We we will have some money to spend because there are some guys we're going to non tender. We could always lower budgets. You know, we don't have like tons of money to go out and throw around, but we can address the needs we to, need to address. I think. So there's a lot of like kind of if then things here in this off season that I'm not totally sure about yet. Uh, you know, let's so let's go with what what I'm sure about, and of course. Uh, some of the guys who are still in the IL are not not in the lineup here, so we'll talk about that too. Romo will be back as a starting catcher. Uh, Austin Hedges did retire, so our backup catcher basically since 2022 is gone. So we will give the backup catcher job to Ali Sanchez, who was pretty bad in the time that he was up, but he's a great defensive catcher. He's a captain. He'll, he'll be with us, and he'll be our backup catcher. And then... Uh, Cornelius Randolph will certainly be back. We'll get back to his contract situation in a minute. Uh, Bryson Stott, I think it's it's kind of to be determined, mainly because he's got one year left of team control before he's a free agent. Uh, he's got a year of arbitration. He's not looking to sign long term. And I think I have some guys who could do the job okay that he does, be maybe a downgrade at the plate, but an upgrade in fielding, even though he's already a really good fielder. Uh, so we'll get into those replacement options in a minute. Basically, I'm not looking to get rid of him, but I think he could be a really valuable trade ship for a starting pitcher, which we're going to need. Uh, Manny is on the IL, but he'll be back as the starting third baseman. Manny will be. Uh, Adames, uh, I plan for him to be back as a shortstop. You know, I do have some replacements who can field really well. Adames, I think, is obviously on the downside of his career, but I, I think at least one more year, if he exercises this player option, we might have to think about something, but we'll see. You know, he's still a really good shortstop uh, who is in decline, but I think can can help our team still. Soto will obviously be back. Uh, you know, hopefully he'll go from being a star level player to like an MVP elite, you know, all-time great again, which he hasn't been the last two seasons. He's just been really, really good. Uh, Pache is not here. Pache is an interesting case. He's really fallen off offensively. You can see back, uh, this has splits on, you can see back in like 2025, 2023 through 25, he was really like an, a, a really solid hitter two of those years with us. And then he's these years are, are, are fine. You know, you can get away with a 92 and 88 with as good as his glove is. A 67 WRC plus is not going to cut it. So hopefully he'll bounce back next year, have a better year. Uh, you know, his walk rate and strikeout rate weren't too crazy off of his career, or and especially his recent seasons. But his strikeout rate did jump and his walk rate did go down uh, since his elite seasons. His BABIP has been lower. But... He's got, uh, so he's got two years left, 29 and 30. You know, I don't have a guy who can field as well as him. So I think he'll, you know, he'll be back, but we need to bounce back from him. Harper will be back, obviously. He really trailed off in the second half. He didn't have a great postseason, but he put up 3.3 war. Uh, he's got 29, 30, and 31 left. And hopefully he can have a respectable end to his career. I think I'm going to have to start sitting him some of the time against lefties. I'll still make him the starter. Uh, but he's really developed pretty bad platoon splits as his career's gone on. I mean, really for a lot of the sim, I guess. <laughs> you know, he's been pretty bad. I mean, he's bad for three years. And then he bounced back and had a couple good years, and then he's been bad again. You know, I think it's to the point in his career where it's, it's understandable to sit him a, a bit against lefties and let him just mash righties. Now, he'll still be my starter against lefties, but I'm thinking probably like every third or fourth game against a lefty, I'll have a righty bat come in for him. Uh, DH, Nate Culbertson did a decent job. He's a lefty uh, who is really good against righties. He's a, a little better than league average against lefties. Uh, but Mike Anthony Valdez is a righty who... Uh, mashes lefties, a 152 WRC plus, and against righties, he was just a 104. So I think Valdez will get a lot of the playing time at DH against lefties, and Culbertson will ride the bench some then. So then what does our backup situation look like? Well, it depends on if somebody replaces Stott, but two guys who I think I think could do the job now, Caleb Ford, you know, he's got a 75 infield range, his arm is weak. He's an ideal second baseman. 
Uh, and he started to hit in the second half of 2028 in AAA after struggling. And he was really good at double it. He's a top 100 prospect. He's down to number 95 after being much higher than that previous sentence. But I think at, at 25, it's time to give him a shot. He might not pan out, but he's got a great glove. He can play almost all over the diamond. He's a righty bat, which helps because Stott is lefty. I think Ford is a guy who will be in the running. Uh, another guy who I'd like to give a shot to is Marco Pantoja, another righty bat who is just an elite defender, uh, you know, possibly an Adame's replacement. I think uh, Pantoja or Ford will back up the infield, be the utility guy, or if we trade Stott, I think they'll both be on the roster, which would give us Valdez, Pantoja, and Ford all righties as kind of like bench bats, and Colbertson also in a platoon kind of a bench bat. So then the last outfield spot will come down to Riggio or Bradfield. Now, Riggio had a really good season. He had a 128 WRC plus, but he's entering arbitration, projected to make 3.4 million. And he's not as good of a defender as Bradfield. Bradfield has a 65 range. Riggio has a 60. Not a huge difference. You know, maybe I should be keeping Riggio because of the fact that neither of them have 70 plus range and are elite center fielders and Riggio has proven it with the bat. But I'm not sure. Ideally, I'd keep both of them, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure. It'll be some Riggio or Bradfield. I could see dealing Riggio if his value is way up because of the really good year he had in limited playing time this year. So that's the hitting side of things. I don't see big changes coming other than maybe a new second baseman if Stott is a good enough trade chip to get us a starting pitcher. So pitching side of things, you know, it, it, it's a little gray. Abel and Nola are both out hurt, and they'll be out for the beginning of the year. I think they'll both be back in Mayish, but they'll both be coming off missing like 13 months. So we've got, you know, Corbin Burns is a free agent. He won't be back. Uh, I think Daniels and Diaz both acquitted themselves well. I think they'll both be in the rotation. Um, you know, the, the spot in the rotation doesn't matter too much. Uh, and Karsten, he made 23 starts for this year and was solid. He was average uh, in his first year in the rotation. Drew Gray was super good out of the bullpen, thinking about maybe giving him a shot on the rotation. So I think what the rotation will look like to start the year will be Rodgers, somebody we bring in, then Daniels, Diaz, and then either Karsten or Gray. And then at some point we'll get Abel and Nola back and we'll have a super deep bullpen because some of these guys who are getting a shot as starters will be in the bullpen, maybe like, you know, Karsten or Gray, whichever one of those two. And then whoever's pitching worse out of Daniels and Diaz will go out when we're fully healthy, if we're fully healthy. Bullpen side of things, Duvall will be back. He was really good. Fairbanks is a free agent. Uh, not sure yet. Hearn is back. Fox is back, but he's another guy who might be trade ship. He's in his last year of arbitration, making $5 million. He's a good reliever. He's not an amazing reliever. I mean, yeah, I mean, he did put up a 2.23 ERA, to be fair. But he's not like a reliever of the year guy, like a top five reliever in the league. And with one year team control, if he's a decent trade ship, I'd trade him, especially because he's a righty. Caraway reestablished himself this year uh, as a reliable option for us. Uh, Karsten, like I said, might be in the rotation, might be in the bullpen. Mott will be in the bullpen. Uh, Gray will be in the rotation of the bullpen. I think Sunloff and Ward both have a, a place on this team. So really, I'm probably not looking to spend much on the bullpen because I think I have a lot of usable arms. And I have added depth coming back with Nola and Abel that will make our staff deeper. So we'll see We'll see what happens there. But I think that the main thing will be to bring in a starter to stabilize this rotation with Nola and Abel out still. And Patino not really an option to come back because he had that major injury. So... You know, Segovia, I mean, he's estimated to make like, what, $16.875 million next year in arbitration as a guy who got optioned to the minors because he's so bad. We're going to non-tender him. He's gone. I'll see if anybody wants him to trade. I don't think anybody will. Uh, Caraway, reasonable. Duvall, reasonable. Fox, again, we'll see. Uh, Randolph is in his last year of arbitration, uh, estimated to make about $20 million. Uh, he's interested in an extension, but he's also 31, and he's a power-hitting first baseman. Uh, who knows how he will age. I don't see signing him to a long-term deal. I could see if he would agree to like a two or three year deal doing that, being like, sure, man. Yeah. On board. But that's probably the extent, you know, maybe sign him through the end of the Harper deal, give him a three year deal. Uh, but you know, he wasn't as good this year as he had been in previous years, but he was still very good. And then Bryson Stott, we talked about $10.5 million arbitration estimate last year. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to, he's 31 now, he's getting up there. Hopefully we'll be able to bring us back a, a solid starting pitcher. 
or be you know the headliner in a package that does Riggio uh estimated to make 3.4 million he might be our fourth outfielder him or Bradfield we'll see what comes up in trades and all that uh Fairbanks again not sure I'm gonna bring him back uh not gonna <laughs> offer him the qualifying offer obviously uh Pop is hurt and he's probably gone as well and then we got a bunch of minor league free agents so that's what we're looking at. Uh, I don't see getting involved in bidding on free agents. I think bringing in a pitcher through trade will probably be the way to go unless somebody really falls through the cracks. There are some good free agents out there. Acuna, Seeger, Alec Bohm, who he finally put it all together at the age of 31. I mean, he had a good year last year. Third, age 30 had a good season. So we traded him at age 27, and he's just kind of been the same he was for us, showed periods of greatness and then was just kind of league average. But he led the league in WRC plus hits, average, and slugging percentage this year. He's way better than Juan Soto at the age of 32. So he's going to cash in on the, somebody's going to make a huge mistake on a contract with him. Acuna is a free agent. Corey Seager, Mackenzie Gore, Luis Castillo, Luis Patino, of course, but he's hurt. Uh, Freddie Freeman, wow, cool. Heston Kerstad, Trammell. So a bunch of decent guys out there, you know, I mean, if for some reason, like Gore or Castillo, like fell through the cracks and didn't have good offers, I could see getting involved, but probably not. I mean, they're just going to be really expensive and I don't see doing it. I think I can get a better deal through trade. The MLB did expand the active roster size to 26, I think, I'm, or 27. I think I'm just going to keep it at 26. I don't see any need to have a 27th guy. I'm probably going to undo that. So, all right, so I'm going to get into the off season here. I'll update you guys on what we're doing, the moves we've made, the award season, uh, all that good stuff. But uh, that's that's kind of the general thought and game plan as we go into this off season to try to get back to being World Series champions again next season. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, we're just about to the new year. It's December 29th. I just noticed the Rule 5 draft didn't take place. I changed the date of it this year. <laughs> I was just like, uh, I just realized the Rule 5 draft didn't take place this year. Weird. All right. Uh, I guess I could maybe change the date. I'll probably just skip it this year. But I went in and I changed it so it was earlier in the off season because it kept being the day after Christmas, which was just absurd. And I guess when I did that, cause the off season had started, that it just skipped it this year. So have fun not having to add guys to your uh, 40 man, I guess, for this season, everybody. Uh, yeah. Anyways, maybe maybe I'll put it like in January or February. So here we go. Let's uh let's see what I've done. I made the trade for Jacob Maton, and it was the it was the trade I showed you guys. Uh, I got that Cal Calvillo Calvillo. Where's this guy from? Danny Dominican. So yeah, Danny Cal Cal Calvillo. I'd imagine is how it's said. Um, and I I traded the guys that I showed you. You know. The, Bryson Stott, obviously, we're moving on from because uh, we, we have some guys who can come in and at least field really, really well, like Gold Glove caliber guys ready. Uh, he only had one year of team control left, and, you know, we, we needed a starter, and Stott was a good trade ship for us. And then Paredes really hurts to give up. The other guys, you know, Peters, I would have rather not given up. Uh, but uh, the, the other two guys I'm fine with. So I really think that this will probably be my opening day rotation. Rogers, Maton, Daniels, Diaz, Karsten. Pretty cool that three of these guys are homegrown. Uh, Daniels being a 2021 14th round draft pick. Diaz being a 2023 fourth round draft pick. Karsten being our 2024 first round draft pick. Um, and then we've got a few homegrown guys in the uh, mix here, like... Uh, Drew Gray was a second round pick from 2024 and was Fox homegrown or I think I traded for him yeah uh so and Reinhardt was a trade yeah anyways Castaneda was homegrown Abel homegrown Nola's is obviously a uh a Philly and so, yeah, I think this will probably be my pitching staff, too. I think Duvall will be back as the stopper. Fox and Hearn as my righty-lefty setup combo. Uh, Caraway, Reinhardt, Ward, and Mott. Ward, uh, you know, he's ready for a shot. He could potentially be a starter at some point for me, I think. And he pitched well in 14 innings last year. He pitched well at AAA. This is a guy I got from Colorado back last offseason uh, in that deal where I dealt Casey Salk, my first-round pick from 2021 who didn't really do much in Colorado, to be honest, his first year there. 
And so then Kyle Mott, Reinhardt Caraway, but then we'll have Sunloff and Castaneda, I think will be our first backup guys maybe at AAA, although Castaneda's out of option years. I don't know, I might need to get rid of him. I'll be adding a few guys to the 40 man as well. Uh, Abel and Nola will obviously begin the season on the IL. Uh, I think Abel's due back like Mayish, and Nola is like May to June. So lineup, you know, I think I think this might be how we come out for opening day as well. Something could always change if a trade comes across or I find something more interesting. But you know, Romo and Sanchez as the catchers. Randolph will play first base. Uh, I think Ford, you know, Ford and Pantoja. Ford will get a lot of playing time, though. We'll kind of battle it out for second base. They're both righty, so I can't do platoon. But Pantoja is my first round pick from 2025, 33rd overall, number 89 prospect. Uh, this was the guy that I was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to take him because of his glove, because this is a gold glove caliber infielder at all three positions. So he'll start at second base. And I think his bat is fine. I think, I think he'll be a really good player with a, an okay bat. Uh, Machado, Adame, Soto, Pache, Harper, Colbertson, and Valdez will play against lefties. Uh, we'll, we'll sit some, Harper some against lefties, so Ford will get in some more. Uh, Valdez will get some more at-bats. And who else? So I think the backups will be uh, Ford, Valdez, and Riggio. Riggio, you know, I, I thought about trading him to make room for Bradfield, but... You know, why trade away depth? Because Bradfield has an option remaining. And yeah, he's 27, like, and he just hasn't gotten a fair shot, really, as a first round pick who's performed really well in Triple A. Uh, MLB wise, I mean, he's only had 291 plate appearances, not really enough. Uh, you know, in Triple A, I mean, he's got a 112 WRC plus, and he's played in 278 games at Triple A, right? He's proven all he can there. I just don't really have room for him. I really don't. Uh, but. We'll we'll see uh, if he gets some playing time this year. And yeah, so I made a couple other just kind of like minor league trades that I make that you see me make in the offseason come just with um, guys who are like out of minor league options that still have decent prospect pedigree, stuff like that. Uh, let me let me go ahead back to like October to make sure I'm not missing any. So here was a big one. Luke Ellis was a guy who was very highly touted. And I think he'll probably go on to be successful, man. Like he just couldn't find it with me. And he pitched parts of two seasons or three seasons with me. And he, he got 87. He only pitched 87 and a third innings. So not a big sample. And he did put up a 3.92 ERA, but his FIP was 5.31. And, and last year, he was just atrocious with a 7.41 ERA and a 7.57 FIP. Now, you know, but his 209 BABIP was not going to sustain. No, he was probably going to come way down from 2.2 home runs per nine. And he had a good strikeout to walk ratio. Uh, but he was out of option years. And I didn't see him as a guy who I was going to keep on my roster all season long. He hadn't proven that. So I traded him to Tampa. I got this guy, Gigi Sawatu. Uh, a, an American pitcher out of Massachusetts. He was drafted by the Rays in the third round of the 2028 draft just this last year. Uh, so they played him as a two-way player. I think I, let me see this. Uh, yeah, I, I can see the value in keeping him as a two-way player, maybe a third baseman with that 75 arm, uh, but probably a reliever. He looks like he could be a really good reliever if he develops. He's only 19, we'll see. And this guy is pretty fun. Ed Ed Milam out of Alamo, Texas. I mean, look at this bat, but like the low contact and the real low avoid case. Uh, it'll be interesting. He really killed it up through high A ball. And then he played the second half of last season in double A and struggled. He's a switch hitter. Uh, he is 25, but he's got all three option years left. So he was drafted out of college, I think, as like an older college player. Second round in 2025. Uh, and he'll be 26 in July. So yeah, he would have been, I think he, what? So he would have been turning 23 around the time he was drafted. Am I doing that math right? So yeah, it was an older college senior. He's high in intelligence. I think he can play right field with this arm. Looks like he can play a little first base. What about third base? Have a good, no, never mind. Uh, but I don't know. I'm pretty excited about this bat, honestly. Like I think he could come up and possibly mash, but he might also flame out with that contact and avoid case. Uh, did strike out in 28.1% of his plate appearance, but he walked in 13.3% uh, in double A. So that's uh, that's Ed Milam. Uh, all right, so let's go forward to November here. Did I make any trades here? Yeah, here. Uh, there's the trade for Maton. 
Oh, right. So I traded Hector Davila, my former number one overall pitching prospect, who then just ran into arm injuries, lost all semblance of control. He's out of option years. He's always hurt. Uh, the Guardian still saw something in him for some reason. So I traded uh, Davila and this guy, Nelson Olivas, who, how did I acquire him? Uh, minor league contract out of the Dominican Republic in the 2021 offseason. Uh, I don't really see much with this guy, but it's another guy that the Indians wanted. So I got this guy, Connor Furman, a 29 year old or 25 year old right fielder who is on the 40 man. Not much glove, but he's a righty hitting outfielder who can who has some pop in his bat. I mean, his per 162 game home run paces 25 home runs per 162 games, and that includes when he was in rookie ball, not really doing much with the the bat. Uh, so since then, he's really come along with the home run ball. And uh, yeah, he got some time in Cleveland last year and did pretty poorly, but he's done well in AAA. I think, you know, he'll probably be a AAA guy for me for now and come up if I have an injury, if I need a righty bat for some reason. Uh, he's, he's just kind of like a, a guy, a useful 40-man player who might not be on the 26-man all the time. And then I got this guy, Josh Bazan, who, yeah, I mean, he's a reliever, but he's their fourth round pick in 2027. He only has two pitches. And uh, yeah, but but he could be a decent reliever, I, I, I think. He was in high A for them and was fine. He was mainly actually in low A last year and was pretty good. He was a starter there. Uh, but with this uh, kind of stamina, potential stopper, if he can get uh, get himself together and get his way up here, he's 23, so he's going to need to come along. And I think that was I think that was all for November. Anything in December? I don't think. No, okay. So those are those are the trades that I made. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is probably looking like the team. I can't say that for certain. What I would like to do is go out and find a center field prospect, like package some of my guys together for a center field prospect. Cause I don't have another 70 or 75 range guy coming up. So Pache has two years left on his deal. He's really faded recently. So I'd like to do that off season center wise. Patino did sign in Atlanta six years, $103 million deal. Uh, Carter Keboom signed in Honolulu, six year, $73.8 million deal. Brian Reynolds cashed in at the age of 33 in Milwaukee with a five year, $58.5 million deal. And I thought Alec Bohm signed. Did I skip him? Or maybe, maybe it was longer ago. Okay. He signed for sure, but we'll find it. Uh, Taylor Trammell signed in St. Louis for five years, $93 million. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I know. Oh, here's Alec Bohm. Five years, seventy-seven million to the rival San Diego Padres. Good for him. And there's a Seager deal in here somewhere too. Oh, Castillo went to Colorado. Three years, sixty-two million. Why would you go to Colorado? I guess it's probably the last year, last deal of his career. He doesn't care. Mackenzie Gore went to San Francisco for six years, ninety-one million. Acuna Jr. went to Chicago White Sox for seven years, two hundred and seventeen million dollars, thirty-one million dollar average annual value. Uh, there's Seager, four years, $91 million to the Cardinals. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of National League teams making moves out here, man. Like, go for it, Cardinals. But uh, Acuna at least went to the AL, so we've got that going for us, which is nice. Um, yeah, so, and in case anybody would want to see this, the way that I would look for, there are a couple ways I would look for a center field prospect to trade for. One, I could I could go here and just kind of figure out who the center fielders are and look at their range like this guy's already interesting but he's going to be impossible to get like look at this potential let's i think i might have looked at this guy before i feel like jeremy kurt yeah it, this was a guy who i think when he was drafted i was like yeah this guy's awesome i want to draft this guy uh and he absolutely demolished rookie ball after being drafted did i go through this exercise with him i've done it with some guys recently i'm not sure I did with him but like i just want to see like hey is there any one player we can give you no okay so Andy Bourne is a top 100 prospect. Let's start with him. Okay, headed to the circle crowd. Danny San Miguel is like a top 25 prospect. Oh, we're wasting their time. How about with those two top 100 prospects? Nope, still nothing. Uh, Ethan Doss is a highly sought after prospect. No interest. Uh, let's just act like, this is just what I kind of do to see like, all right, is anything even possible? Let's act like we're going willing to give up Juan Soto and eat a bunch of his deal. 90% of it. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll do that. Okay, good to know. Good, good to know. <laughs> More time to consider it. So if we do 55% of Soto's deal and two of our top 100 prospects and another really good prospect, they'll, they'll send us this guy. So let's try to see if there's like guys that they're 
irrationally interested in here. See if we can ma manipulate a package. Okay, so born they want in it, big time. San Miguel. Okay, so those two guys would be a requirement, basically. What about DOS? Okay, so there are other guys are interesting in, interested in here. Uh, let's go ahead and put in Flores. They agree to this trade. Let's let's take this down and, and see who else they're interested in. Uh, let's throw in Mick Abel just to see, and then take Soto out of it. I like the offer, just need a little more. I'm not going to talk myself into this, but that guy is a freaking stud, though. Uh, this I'm not even sure who this dude is. Jackson Jean. Yeah, he's got good uh, poor movement. He's a decent pitcher. So, I mean, I can't get... Like, San Miguel is every bit the prospect, even better than Kurt is. Kurt's just can play center field, but I can't give up the best prospect in the deal plus four other guys. All right. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to get around including Bourne and Miguel. So another way that I would do this is I'd go to players, MLB player list, and I'd say include minor leaguers. And I would go to all outfielders, fielding ratings, and go to outfield range. And then just look for like younger guys. Like this guy's 24. No, oh, he's in my system. <laughs> Uh, now, some of these guys aren't going to be very good prospects because, uh, you know, I'm just searching by outfield range and every minor league prospect is going to be in here. You know, you're going to get some guys that can't hit at all. Here's a 21-year-old. This guy must be a draft prospect this year. Yeah, he's a college junior. Okay. Uh, no? See, so this is, this is one way that I do it when I try to find prospects. Now, this guy's kind of interesting. I mean... He's a pretty risky prospect. Let's see what my scout thinks. Yeah, I mean, this guy, I don't know if he's going to make it to the majors with how low his four is with the bat. And they want a lot for him. Let's just see if we can manipulate together a, uh, a different package. So I'm just trying to find guys that they like here. So then I can take Ford out of the deal because I have no interest in dealing Ford uh, away. And not really. Well, I'd be willing to trade Perez. He's kind of, he hasn't uh, had a lot of chance in the majors for me. Only 160 plate appearances. And he's mashed in AAA over two seasons, but I'm, I'm willing to trade him. Uh, let's keep adding, let's add somebody else. And just hit, keep hitting, and I'm going to take these extra guys out eventually. I'm just trying to identify players that they like. Uh, really, a bunch of guys I'd rather not trade. Mike Winter, I think I'd be okay trading. He's really hit well in the minors for me, but he's not an amazing prospect. Let's see what happens now when we take all these guys out and then take Caleb Ford out. Oh, they agree to this. Applegate, Perez, and Winter. You know, I don't love this guy. I don't love his low low floor. I mean, oh, he's fine. How'd he do? He ripped up rookie ball in just 15 games. What if I took Winter out? Um, he's not totally insulted by that. Who's this guy, Buzan? See, Nicholas Perez is a guy I'm willing to give up, though. Carson Applegate, I, who is this? My eighth round pick from 2025. Oh, and had a really good season as a 24-year-old in rookie ball. He put up 1.1 batter war and 2.6 pitcher war. So he's not a bad pitcher. It's really not. I mean, you can see a major league player here. I don't know why my assistant GM still has him in rookie ball. But he's not somebody that like I, I can't possibly see myself dealing. I could definitely deal him. Uh, so Gutierrez and Bazan are two guys. Oh, Bazan's the one guy I just traded for. Who's Gutierrez? Danny Gutierrez. Oh, I would trade this guy. His movement sucks. I'll never use him in Philly. Uh, I would make this trade. What if I remove Nicholas Perez? Is there somebody they like? No. I think, yeah, I think Perez is probably the worst player I can get away with here, or the least useful player to me. I know, I don't really mind this trade at all. I kind of like it. I kind of like 
this guy's range. I like that he's probably like two years away when Pache's deal is up. It, it gives me another guy in my system. My assistant GM doesn't like it at all, which means we should definitely accept it, right? Uh, I don't know. Would the O's give us anything else? It's possible. Oops. Uh, like this Rule 5 eligible pitcher. Is he worth anything? He's not a terrible pit guy to get. They need more from me though. How much? Oh, you want like another real player? No, I'm looking. I'm looking for you to give me something, guys. Wait, now he's not sure about this deal. Man, he liked this deal, and I started to make this work now, and now he needs to think about it. Come on, man. What are you killing me? All right, I could throw in anybody, though. I can throw in a 32-year-old Tristan Beck. My assistant GM really doesn't like it, which is funny. So, you know, I got that possible deal with the Orioles. I can go back to the MLB player list. Where were we on this list? What was that guy's name? I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. We had looked at this guy, this guy, this guy. Who's this guy? Um, he's a major league player. See, I'd kind of prefer somebody a little further away from the majors. Is this guy signed anywhere? Oh, he's a high school player. And then we're down to the 65 range, guys. So Mario Peraza, Yankees. He's at the International Complex. His floor is so low. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I might make that trade with the Orioles, to be honest with you. I kind of like it. And we're not going to get Gieski. Did we look at this guy? Yeah. Did we? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I'm a little tired. I can't uh, not remember names. I don't remember who I looked at. But um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of I kind of like this deal with the uh, the Orioles. I think that um, Perez is a to is the only piece that's you know. A little hard to give up not hard to give up, but the only really useful piece i'm giving up and i don't have a lot of use for him because you know i have uh pantoja i have ford i have other guys on my 40 man antonio anderson's an infield prospect uh i feel like i'm f nasim nunez i feel like i'm forgetting one other yeah nasim nunez that's the other one and then perez and then i've also got more guys on the way uh, Shinoda is a totally useful piece here. You know, I, I mean, that's like four guys who can do the job of Perez. Champions on the way. And Richardson. Yeah, Richardson's a decent player. 70 outfield range, too. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to make that trade. I think it would be a guy. I think it's a guy I should bring in. So I'm going to jump ahead probably to the, should we go ahead and make that trade? Let's go ahead and make it while, while I've got you guys here. And so I, I know I don't normally do this much of like uh, showing how the sausage is made, but I figured it'd be fun just to kind of mess around here. I love how much my assistant GM hates this deal. I might like Perez is the only obvious major leaguer here. Like he's an obviously at least a utility player and he, he bats right handed. And I, I have other guys I want to try now there uh so yeah i'm gonna make this deal he's a former top 100 prospect too i made a similar trade to get him when he was the number 67 prospect in baseball i mean he's been a top 100 prospect he's crushed it in triple a but uh i'm just i'm just willing to do this for mr jeremy thomas uh my scout has him a 70 range osa him as a 75 either way he's a center fielder he could probably start the year in a ball for us hopefully rip it up and then like 2031 season maybe be ready when Pache's deal, that's if he if his back comes along. So let's do this deal. I think it's fun. I think that's a fun trade to make. And then what I would do is I'll go in uh, to Jeremy Thomas and I'll add him to my minor league short list and I will control him uh, in terms of his promotions and demotions. So he was in rookie ball last year. Now he's 21. So if we put him in like low A East, he might be even a little good for that league. But I'm going to put him in low A, give him a chance to really succeed there and get off to a good start. Uh, and we'll see where it goes from there with him. So Jeremy Thomas is with us from the O's. Thank you, Baltimore. They traded us their first-round pick from just this year, 2028. But they got some decent players. Nicholas Perez will hop right into the Major League roster. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure they'll make use of Gutierrez because they don't mind 
below movement as much as I do. Uh, so I think I'm probably going to hop ahead to opening day now. I don't know, unless something else happens. But that was the one thing on my to-do list still. Uh, so that's done. And I don't know, the team's coming together. I think this is about what it will look like going into the 2029 opening day. Okay, opening day 2029. The Phillies, it's, it's time. You know, I think the theme of this season is, uh, are we still a championship team? Do we have enough left in the tank? Or are we over the hill and overpaid and overrated? Uh, before I show you the standings and all that, my scout just had a killer offseason. You know those like scouting trips your scout goes on where if you play the game and where they just uh, you know find a random prospect for you? I really haven't had a good one come in, and sometimes that can be a way to discover some really top prospects, you know, maybe a couple times a decade. And I hadn't had any yet, really, that were worthwhile that my scout had discovered. I'm not talking about like the international amateurs that you sign or the international free agents in the off season. I'm talking about the guys that your scout finds on trips and si signs and assigns your international complex. So this gentleman out of the Netherlands, uh, I don't know, is it Ep Van Dijk? You guys tell me. Uh, 16 years old. So, you know, obviously the, the uh, floor here is quite low, but my scout thinks he's a potential star. OSA is even higher on him with the overall. He's got low intelligence. Focus can be a problem. We'll see. Uh, Bill Hurta was also signed this offseason out of the Dominican. I mean, this guy could kill it. Looks like a good player that you just pick up for free. I think this guy was also this offseason. Oh, no, that, this guy was last summer. Love this infield range on him, and the bat seems okay-ish. And one of these other guys was this guy was also this offseason Thomas Nieto uh, out of the Dominican again not a not a superstar looking player but a decent player to get for free is that the end of them uh, yeah that guy's older I feel like there might have been one more guy that was okay ish yeah this guy uh, this pitcher I mean this is better than you know the normal 25 out of 25 that you get on all these from these guys so my scout is out here killing it in the offseason and so let's go to the preseason predictions. Let's get into it. We are predicted to win uh, 98 games. Uh, the Giants predicted to have just an amazing pitching staff and win the NL Robinson division with just a 3.22 ERA. I mean, there are only four teams under four, <laughs> and no team, no other team is lower than 3.61. That's us. 832 runs. The Pirates and the Dodgers and the Rockies are predicted to be better than that. I guess the Dodgers have a rough pitching staff, but they're predicted to be better than they were last year. I guess they reloaded a bit. And let's see, top hitters. Do we get anybody here? We've got Juan Soto, and that looks like it for the top hitters. We've got Rogers under the top pitchers. Bellinger still over here. Our man Gieski in Pittsburgh is there. Uh, Hassel in San Diego. Uh, is this Jordan Alvarez? Oh, yeah. He signed with the Dodgers. That's kind of fun he was in texas interesting and yoan mancada still out there doing his thing the al side of things you got acuna franco trout julio rodriguez eloy i'm just kind of going over the guys who are current players bo bichette in texas he signed there in 2025 vlad jr still in toronto emerson Han hancock still out here doing his thing Angels, Rays, Rangers, and Orioles predicted to be the NL, uh, or I'm sorry, the AL Mantle Division playoff teams. So let's just see if I did anything else. I think I made a couple of small moves since the last time uh, I updated you guys. Let me just check December real quick. I think we already covered all this. Oh, so I did bring the Rule 5 draft in. And I kind of did it in a rush and accidentally lost a player that I didn't want to lose. <laughs> uh, so I got him back, basically. Uh, so I lost Chris Cardona, which I pretty much knew was going to happen. Uh, he's a 25-year-old first baseman. He was my third-round pick in 2025. You hate to lose a guy who you draft that early. Uh, but basically, I couldn't find a trade for him, which I was surprised by after he put up 118 WRC plus in double A. I mean, he didn't murder it, but he played well. He's just a first baseman. I couldn't find a trade for him. I knew I was going to lose him. Uh, I've got two first base DH already in my roster and Randolph and Culbertson. I've got another guy, I think Wingrove is his name, in triple A. So he's really like fourth on my depth chart at a place where you really don't need a lot of depth, first base DH. I mean, come on. So I lost him. 
And the other guy I lost was Jadon Richardson. And this was just, I was just playing and not paying attention. I don't know, probably doing baby stuff in between stuff. And uh, I lost Richardson in the rule five. So I would have predict, predict, protected him uh, because of a 70 outfield range. Uh, and it was just a brain fart on my part. So I undid it. And I basically, I gave the twins the guy that I would have DFA to make room for him, which was Tommy Delandry, who was still a decent prospect. I mean, it's the same age. And he, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he, he had a killer rookie year for me in uh, 2026, but really hasn't done anything since then the last two years, uh, mainly in AAA. So I, I did that. I felt like that was fair to do because of the fact that I just was asleep at the wheel and not paying full attention. So I, I gave them the guy that I would have DFA'd, and they can do what they want with him. Uh, let's go forward. January, I don't think there were many more trades. This is all just my assistant GM just promoting and demoting guys constantly. Like, take a break, man. Jeez. Give it a rest. <laughs> what the hell is this guy doing? Like, dude, you just, just like, relax. It's the off season, man. Uh, February. Oh, here he is again. <laughs> this is crazy. How much the AI does this. Uh, so if there is any trade in here, you know, we might miss it because this is just crazy. <laughs> Look at this. I feel like I made one other deal, like a minor league type deal, but I might be remembering wrong. That's February. He's been doing the same stuff in March. Yeah. There he goes. Oh, wait, I think I saw it. Nope. Why? Why is this a thing? All right, anyways, if there was another trade, we're not going to see it. <laughs> uh, so let's look at the team. Uh, you know, the line, no surprises here. We've got Romo, Randolph, Pantoja, and Ford will figure it out at second base. They'll also each get some time at short, third. Uh, Ford will get some time in the outfield. Uh, Machado, Adame, Soto, Pache, Harper, Culbertson. Valdez will be the DH against lefties. And Sanchez, the backup. Uh, Ford, we already mentioned, and Riggio also on the team. And Ricky Bradfield did get optioned. Uh, pitching side of things, we have an injury to report. Uh, Jacob Maton, the guy we acquired because of the injuries to Abel and Nola, uh, yeah, he's hurt. He's out for two more weeks with back spasms. So our pitching staff is Trevor Rogers and then a bunch of young guys, all, all guys I drafted. Uh, Rogers, then Diaz, Karsten, Gray made the rotation, and Carter Daniels. Daniels is probably like the number two starter here, but he's hurt um, with back tightness day to day. So I'm going to see if giving him the extra days here will get him healthy for his first start. If he's not healthy by the first start, I'm going to put him on the IL, and it's retroactive to like a couple weeks ago. So he'd be able to come right back. Uh, so bullpen side of things, Duvall, Fox, Hearn, Sunloft, Caraway, Reinhardt, Mott, and Ward. Uh, you know, pretty similar bullpen to last year. Sunloft and Reinhardt both get a run, especially while Maton's out. They're both up. And Nola and Abel, obviously, too. You know, these are the three big arms, I think. Duvall, Fox, Hearn. Mott is solid. Caraway solid. And then Sunloft, Reinhardt, and Ward are all kind of trial guys. Ward is a, a decent starting pitcher, just hasn't had a extended run at the major leagues yet. So I, I like him. Uh, and what he brings as a young arm. And it comes as no surprise you guys have heard me say that this many, many times, but I, I love having homegrown guys. I love having the same guys on my team year after year. I just feel like it's more realistic and also just drafting guys and having them come up. I love that four of my five starting pitchers are homegrown guys that I drafted in the sim. That's fun to me. Uh, player development wise, we have the 13th best system. So Danny San Miguel is up to ch the 12th best prospect. Uh, Ethan Doss up to 45th two-way player who I am making just an outfielder now. I, I don't know. I just like his pitching is fine, but I don't know that he's like a major league pitcher and he's such a good uh, hitter. I mean, look, he kills. Well, I mean, not kill, well, we'll see what his st splits look like, but look how much better he is against righties and lefties. So he's probably a platoon guy. He would probably sit against lefties, but just be the best hitter in the league against righties. So does that play out in his stats? I mean, he's got a 110 WRC plus against lefties. And against righties, he's a 110. Huh. Okay, so that hasn't played out uh, in in his performance. Andy Bourne is back, 66 best prospect. This is our fifth round pick from 2026. 
Uh, Caleb Ford, of course, on the team. Pantoja on the team, both top 100 prospects. Shortstop caliber players, they'll play second base. Uh, Connor Furman, we brought him in the offseason. Number 102 prospect. He came in from Cleveland. I think I covered this earlier in the video. Uh, in that deal with Hector Davila, where we dealt Davila away. <clears throat> and we've got... Uh, Thomas, who we got in from the Orioles, of course, earlier this video. Childry, our first round pick from 2026. Just going to go over the guys who cracked the top 200 here. Uh, Edwin Flores is an international guy. Ed Milam, we covered earlier. Elijah James Fuller. And these guys might start at a different level. I haven't gone through and assigned all my minor league guys yet because they've got like a week till their season starts. Elijah James Fuller. Uh, He's a 22-year-old. He's a 16th round pick in 2025. Who's looking like he might be an okay-ish prospect. Uh, then we've got that international guy we talked about. Uh, Jesus Andalon. I'm not familiar with. Who's this guy? Oh, he was my international free agent signing from last year, 2028. And then after that, we've got uh, we've got our we've got Melendez, who is our what first round pick, 33rd overall in 2028. I mean, this guy's gonna be in Double A already. It's looking like we've got more arms on the way. Uh, and I'd imagine the other guy I drafted. Uh, CJ Hilton, he's on here too somewhere. Uh, you, yeah, there he is. So he's in our top 20, but there's Hilton. Pretty pretty okay looking prospect. Not amazing. So that's the team. That's the season. I don't think there's anything else I was going to show you guys. Uh, Salary-wise, Nola, of course, is on on the books now until Harper and Machado are out. I, I, I don't, I mean... I think I'll pick up that team option on Manny, even if he's terrible. Just unless he'll like take a cheaper deal or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so Randolph, last year of his deal. We'll see what we do with him. As a first baseman, he'll be 32. He's listed as a right fielder because I was messing around with stuff in spring training. Uh, we'll go ahead and change that back. So, you know, I we'll see what happens with him. Uh, Taylor Hearn probably won't be back. We'll see what happens with a guy like Mason Fox. Uh, Duvall doesn't, our stopper doesn't want to come back because he doesn't like Girardi. I'm like, okay, dude. And, uh, yeah, after that, I mean, it's kind of, uh, kind of business as usual with most guys. Oh, the one thing I did want to check when I was looking at this player development reminded me, I want to see where the pro, the international prospect that we traded to the Mariners with Stott, where he ended up this year. Parade is he's 19th best prospect now. Yeah. I mean, this guy's going to be awesome. But we knew that. We got back a top pitcher who hopefully will be healthy soon. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Go Phils. Uh, you know, I think we have enough left in the tank to be a contender. I, we're not going to be a dominant team. Uh, I think it's hard to call this team a World Series favorite, but I think we're in the mix. And hopefully we can stay healthy enough to uh, to do the thing. Oh, by the way, team focus, rebuilding. I don't know if you can adjust that. I don't know where you can, but I assume that's why my ticket sales are down 6.6% because my fans think I'm rebuilding now. I don't know why the focus was changed to that. I briefly looked around to see where you could change it. I didn't see anywhere. I don't know. Maybe one of you guys knows. But uh, all right. Talk to you guys next time. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along this Philly series. Uh, it's fun to have people follow along. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to do so. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you next time.